The new AMD graphics cards are here. The names of the two models with the new RDNA 3 graphics architecture are RX 7900 XTX and RX 7900 XT. There were a number of well-selected benchmarks, various specifications, and numerous marketing claims made at the presentation. We will work through all that in the next few minutes and present the facts. No, the GeForce RTX 4090 is not beaten by the new AMD cards, so the rumor mill was wrong. However, the RX 7900 XT and XTX have competitive prices, great energy efficiency, and a strong configuration. So, AMD wants to be classified as B-grade instead of just based on raw performance. Will they succeed? Before we start making vague predictions, we'll first give you the hard facts about the new graphics cards. The first model that AMD presents is the Radeon RX 7900 XTX, which relies on the full Navi 31 expansion. It is equipped with 96 compute units, 24 GI byte of memory, a 384-bit wide memory connection, and has a gaming clock of 2.3 GHz, front end, 2.5 GHz, with a TBP of 355 watts. Support for the modern DisplayPort 2.1 and AV1 encoding and decoding is also provided. AMD's reference design of the 7900 XTX is 287 mm long and it occupies 2.5 slots. AMD is quite proud of this as that means this does not require any new power plugs or power supplies. According to AMD, the Radeon RX 7900 XTX is up to 1.7 times faster than the Radeon RX 6950 XT in 4K Ultra HD. The second graphics card in the lineup is the Radeon RX 7900 XT, the slimmed down version of the XTX. It comes with 84 compute units, a clock of 2 GHz, 20 GB of memory, connected to 320 bits, and has a TBP of 300 watts. As is the case with Ryzen, which broke Intel's dominance in CPUs, the switch to chiplets helps AMD drastically undercut Nvidia's prices. While the RTX 4090 costs a whopping $1,599 and the upcoming GeForce RTX 4080 costs $1,199, the new 24GB Radeon RX 7900 XTX will cost $999 and the 20GB RX 7900 costs $899 when they launch on December 13th. AMD also announced a new HYPRRX feature that can significantly improve frame rates with just one click by enabling FSR, Radeon Boost, and other helpful Radeon technologies. Like FSR3, this feature will be released in 2023, the first half to be exact. Pure performance is only a part of the package. AMD has also increased the media and display engines in RDNA 3. The Radeon RX 7900 XTX and 7900 XT support DisplayPort 2.1, unlike the GeForce RTX 4090, which means they can support 4K displays at up to 480Hz or 8K displays at 165Hz. And 12 bits per color channel allows for up to 68 billion colors, which, while welcomed, is pretty irrelevant to a gamer right now. If anything, it is only a plus for content creators. This is exactly where some marketing window dressing is done because just because DisplayPort 2.1 enables something like 8K at 165Hz doesn't mean that such FPS values will also be achieved with an RX 7900 XTX. Yes, AMD rivals FSR, but who would want to use high resolution graphics sludge? The opinions differ here. Optimizing the architecture, migrating to TSMC's advanced 5 nanometers process, and offloading the buffer to a dedicated trailing node chiplet helped AMD exceed efficiency targets, with CEO Lisa Su claiming that RDNA 3 offers 54% higher performance per watt than RDNA 2. This allowed AMD to stick with a traditional 2x8-pin power connector design and cleverly sidestep the melting adapter controversy that NVIDIA has become embroiled in with the RTX 40. With RDNA 3, AMD has managed to fit 54% more transistors than RDNA 2 into a smaller footprint, which is a 165% improvement in overall density. Nevertheless, the GCD, i.e. the computing chip, is relatively small at 300mm superscript 2. This is one reason why the large ADA chip of the RTX 4090 turns out stronger overall. Ray tracing, AMD claims that RDNA 3 offers up to 50% more performance per compute unit than RDNA 2. 
That is a big improvement in combination with the additional compute units and could make ray tracing games really playable on graphics cards of the RX 7000 series. However, according to our projections, the performance of an RTX 3090T will be reached at best during ray tracing. RDNA 3 now also includes matrix cores like NVIDIA and Intel Arc, which will soon be used for upsampling games, especially since Radeon boss Scott Herkelman announced FSR 3 for 2023 at this event, with a double of frame rates compared to the already existing FSR2. AMD's spectacular presentation left us with many questions, such as, how will the Radeon RX 7900 XTX and 7900 XT stack up against the GeForce RTX 4090 and 4080, if not their own predecessors? Will the switch to multiple chips lead to any performance fluctuations? Will RDNA 3 deliver a compelling ray tracing experience? We'll have to wait for independent benchmarks when the new graphics cards hit the market on December 13th to get answers. We at PCGH will certainly be the first to deliver those. Until then, have a good time. Bye.